morning everybody sorry I didn't get this vlog up last night but it was a long day and I was exhausted I had eaten and I sat down to watch the Marlins said well, I'll do it right after the Marlins game is over it's decided oh by the way you might have just heard that go kick on my air conditioning is back on yay at the expense of $440 yesterday but my air conditioning it be working again back to my story from last night I sat down watched the Marlins around 8 o'clock and I think I was out by 8.15 and I woke up at 2.15 so no vlog from yesterday so you can get two today two 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 double of them alright got my hat on a lot of people like this hat I'll wear this hat then for y'all um, I got a bunch of questions yesterday I want to answer them some of them are going to get answered on their own day. They're going to be so long, they need their own day. I, I can't do them, get through them quick enough. So I'm going to start right now so I can get through these so that this vlog is not too, too long. Keto Meets Menopause asks, what is, your temp what is the temperature in your area? I live in Miami, Florida, and it's August. Trust me, it's hotter than Hades. Absolutely, all day and night, it's hot. It uh, never gets below even 80 degrees at night, and it's a humid hot. So it, it, you sweat even without the sun at night. Yesterday at about 2 p.m., I looked at the Weather Underground website to see what was going on because I heard a little bit of thunder, and it said, feels like temperature 120 degrees. So, yeah, it's hot. All right, next question. Luke Sharon, what is your favorite book and film? My favorite book is We the Living. And even though I am a uh, left-leaning progressive, and it was written by a one of the queens of the extreme right, Anne Rand. Uh, she wrote this in the early 1930s. Um, uh, it's called We the Living, and it's the story of a family uh, and a heroine is the, uh, is the Kira is the name uh, is the name of the main heroine of the, of, of the book. Uh, it's their life in Soviet Russia from about 1919 to about 1926, um, and it's a it's an it's a look at the extremes that happened in that country politically and economically. Uh, and it, it, it's it, it's why that system eventually did fail, because of the just horribleness of it. I mean, I'm a left, I'm a leftist, but I certainly don't advocate uh, anything close to that. It, it's, it's a failed system, it doesn't work. So, that's that part of the question. Going on to my favorite film, No Brainer, Seven Days in May, the original from 1964. The, uh, oh, the, no. this is what I hate about getting old. Um, the script was written by uh, uh, Rod Serling. It was the first project that was done in 64, so it was the first project he did after uh, The Twilight Zone had ended in 1963. It's an absolutely fantastic and fabulous thriller. Uh, it stars Frederick March as the President of the United States. Burt Lancaster is the chief of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Um, Kirk Douglas as his assistant, his loyal assistant. Loyal, you'll have to take that as, as it is. Loyal and uh, maybe not so loyal. And uh, Ava Gardner and Martin Balsam, uh, Howard Silva, and many other character actors. It's a fabulous movie and one very much worth watching. Luke, I know it's from 1964, it's in black and white, but it's one hell of a movie. If you have not seen it, watch it. It is amazing. I love that movie. I've, I can watch it a million times and still not be tired of it. Okay, the next is Alan, Alan, Adam, Alan, Adam Fulton. And Richard Seibel basically asked the same question. My occupational background. I've done. I've, been, I've worn a hat of many colors. 
not this one, but I've been, I've worked as a teenager, I've worked as an event, I worked uh, for public supermarkets for 22 and a half years, part-time, make extra money. I worked uh, for Southern Air Transport after I graduated from the university um, in the accounting department. Uh, there, uh, accounts payable for um, about eight years um, until they decided to, no, six years, from 82 to, 87, to 88. Uh, in 1988, the company moved to Columbus, Ohio. So I was, I quit. I didn't want to move to Columbus, Ohio. Um, and so um, after that, I worked for Bugs Berger for about four years um, in their uh, accounting department. That time I was accounts receivable. And uh, then I also, uh, after that, I worked at the University of Miami. Uh, for about seven years and got my uh, graduate degree and after I, that was over quit that started my own business and now I have that now it's Re Family Research Inc. small company just me and um, I do genealogical research that's my business that was my uh, passion in life is genealogical research <clears throat> I've done my own family. <coughs> Pardon me. When I was uh, 17, a book came out by Alex Haley called Roots. It intrigued me. It got me interested in genealogical studies. I knew that my grandmother, um, who I never met, she died before I was born. Uh, she died in January of 1960, and I was born in June of 1960. She had cancer. And um, she had been born with a German noble title, even though she was American. Her father <coughs> was, a, was a count in Germany, and he come here to America to make his own life, because uh, all he had was a title and no money. <laughs> he was a count, his, his name was Count Friedrich Christian von Seitz, but he had no money. <laughs> um, so he came here, made a life for himself, married a German woman, who was already in New York. She had come about a year before. Uh, and her name was uh, was Berta Hofstadler. And uh, my grandmother was Berta von Seitz. Um, she was the last of 11 children, by the way. She was 11 of 11, which uh, she had nephews and nieces that were born before she was born. <laughs> she had a six-year-old, her, uh, her niece, Grace, was six years older than her how it happens sometimes but uh, and I've had my company for over 20 years now and um, I do family research when people need something done for their uh, for a birthday they want to present it in a book form I put it I make it into a PDF and send it to the people and they can decide how to publish it however they want to publish it I don't do any publishing of their stuff I do the work sent to them I do it for birthdays, for anniversary presents, and especially Christmas presents. That's why I get real busy around Christmas time, and I kind of disappeared a few times on YouTube and not around too much. It's because I have to disappear because of my work. It gets really busy because people want it for Christmas presents for their children, for their parents, for their spouse. You name it, and I get about seven or eight projects going, and I'm tapped out, I'm busy. So anyways, that's my occupational background. Through that, by the way, I have been able to, because I've done a lot of research, uh, and I traveled, I traveled to England in 1983, uh, because I had just been to school, and that was part of my uh, graduation. I, um, I did research for my own. I, at one time, was gonna publish something and I did research in England and I did research in Germany for two days and I stayed at a cousin of mine albeit a distant cousin but he is a, a cousin um, of the Duke of Saxe Meiningen uh, he uh, had his he still lived in a castle it didn't rule anything he was a non-reigning duke but um, he uh, 
generously allowed me to stay at his place and uh, do research in his uh, family uh, library on a number of different subjects and the people you sometimes you see the genealogical stuff there and you see the chart but you but you want to know the stories behind them and I think that was that's the most interesting part of this work is I try to when I do my work I try to find out the stories that these people had their lives and what they're you know about and what they did and how they were this is starting to get long and I don't want to get too too long okay but that's my occupational background I do family research and I love it it's an absolute passion of mine okay next question is by Jennifer HC 76 did I ever visit Louisville oh yes three times I say my grandmother was from Louisville uh, the one I never met but she was not for actually from Louisville her family lived in Jefferson Town and if you've been in the Louisville area Jefferson Town is a, a, a suburb now um, it is where my grandfather uh, or my great-grandfather had a farm he had a 160 acre farm and uh, that's where he raised his family and 11 children uh, and it was in Jefferson Town Kentucky right outside of Louisville uh, the next person is Christine aka German chick uh, what day is my birthday my birthday is June 23rd 1960 and it was a Thursday and I was born at 1 16 in the morning okay Callum Pugsley asks Callum my boy love you brother you good guy favorite thing about Miami my favorite thing about Miami I think it's uh, now it would be uh, it's a, I'm a little bit torn on that I love our winter weather I'll go with that over anything people when you visit Miami you visit between November 1st and March 31st don't come during the summer you'll be miserable and you're not gonna like all the rain come during our winter months it's our dry season. The temperature in the morning is about uh, 60 degrees to 64 degrees, somewhere in that range in the morning, the low humidity. And the afternoon, tip, which is 20-some um, degrees Celsius maybe, because I know 30 is 80. I would say maybe about 20 degrees Celsius or 22 degrees Celsius in the morning. And in the evening, or during the day, it's about 78 maybe close to 80 that's normal we do get cold snaps and for a couple of days it can be br brutally cold um, I've been down in the 30s it's been down in the 30s a few times it's even been below freezing a couple of times not very often and we have had frost and we've had uh, we even had snow one day uh, it was January 19th 1977 uh, it's called the day that it snowed in Miami and it did actually snow there uh, another famous thing happened that day I'll go into that some other time but that uh, there's a film and you can look it up on YouTube called the day it snowed in Miami and it'll surprise you and it'll be about something that you won't expect it to be about because something else like I said happened that day politically in Miami and on January 19th 1977 so uh, on to the next question uh, Jimmy Ricky asks where did I get the hat I got this hat on Amazon I looked up fedoras and I got it uh, just look up the word fedora uh, it was surprisingly cheap too I could it was only what $22 um, so I mean it was it was pretty inexpensive McKinley Griggs my boy McKinley love you brother and I love your family a great guy everybody go to his channel well go to everybody's channel but go to his channel McKinley is an awesome dude and makes awesome uh, fitness and family vlogs I love that guy and I'm way still behind on catching up to his 
but I'm starting to, to do a pretty good catch up. I'm getting close. He asked if I could bring if I could bring one thing to his location for winter, what would it be? And I've forgotten to get it, and I'm gonna go get it right now. Okay, guys. What would I bring McKinley? Trust me, I would bring this sucker. I don't know how much you can see of it. Ugh. But I do have a heavy jacket. I mean, it's pretty dang thick. Um, I think it's made by Abercrombie and & Fitch. And it cost me about 140 bucks about 10 or 11 years ago. But it is an awesome jacket. I mean, look at that. They go right around your things and you can actually make it tighter. Here, you can use this and you can make it real tight around your wrists. But it's nice and thick and it's got, oh, it's just wonderful. But McKinley, that is exactly, whoops, I gotta move back. Oh, get my stuff here. Um, yes, McKinley. That is what I would bring to Missouri for a winter. There's no way I'm going to get caught in no snow and not have something to wear. So, yes, oops, I just lost my pen. I'll get it later. All right, next question. Let's see, I've had, I done, Jimmy. oh, that's everybody's questions. I finished. Oh, I got done. So this long vlog is over everybody i will have this one out this morning and i'll do today's later tonight i will not fall asleep again i promise and i got lots of watching today i got today off so i'm going to be watching vlogs all day long i hope i don't get put into spam hell because of all the uh, uh responses i'm going to make it's going to be scary but um guys if you haven't asked me a question ask all right, y'all, take care. Have a great vlogist Saturday. I will take care. And hopefully I've had a little more energy than the last couple because I ain't been feeling so well, but I feel wonderful. Yesterday and today I felt back to, felt back to being Kevin. So, all right, guys, this is it. I'm rambling. Goodbye, goodbye. I'm going to do a lot of jump cuts. Take it easy, teasy and peasy. Peace out.